Hey everyone, Brian from WorkshopAddict.com in trying to find a good wire stripper, crimper, something that you're comfortable working with. And I think that's what it comes down to. Everybody likes something different. But what we're running into these days, picking up different aftermarket light sets and adjusting the wiring harness is some weird insulation. We'll find a very, very tiny wire that's running through something that has a ton of insulation over it and I'm really not sure why they're doing that, if they're trying to fool us into thinking there's bigger wires on some of this uh, wiring that we're buying. But whatever it is, it's a pain in the butt if you like these style strippers, because you might think it's an 18 gauge wire, put it in 18, strip it, and it doesn't strip real well, and you're wondering what the heck's going on, but the reality is, is you gotta drop down to 22, because it's just, tiny wires inside. So in messing with this, we thought there has to be a better way. So in searching around for some parts on summitracing.com, we found their branded pair of wire strippers. Now these are an automatic style wire stripper that will strip anything from 10 gauge to 24 gauge. And there is something very interesting and nice about this. Now, it also comes with crimpers on the bottom for insulated wire, non-insulated wire, and it has a wire cutter. I have not gotten into using that because I really dislike the fact that when I'm crimping, I have to move my hands and use another tool. So in using this, what we found, again, for us, is that we like to use it on the bench or use it where we're comfortable having another tool. If we're in a tight area and we can't see what we're doing and we're trying to just use one tool, we'll bobble back and forth between a tool like this and still use the bottom. The bottom on this Milwaukee has red, yellow, and blue dots for where you should use each crimper. That helps a lot because if you're using a yellow or a blue wire here, you can figure out where it needs to go in that tight space. This unit just basically tells you 10 to 22 and 10 to 4, 22 to 14 for the crimpers. So you're using basically the same one. So not where I'm at. A normal set of crimpers is just a set of cutters and crimpers. I like to crimp at the end of the tool. You don't have to push as hard. I seem to get a more solid crimp like this. Let me back up here, bring you in, and show you what this wire stripper does. And you can tell me in your comments what you think about it, if you think you'd use it, or what your favorite one is, because I'd like to hear that too. I know we all like something different. Jeff's eyes are getting poor, so when we look at wire strippers, we have to make sure they have very big numbers on them. Yeah, I'm not going after Jeff. It's the truth, man. We're all getting older. If we don't have our reading glasses on, can't see. So let's dive in here and take a look at this. Okay, so I'm gonna use this tool upside down so you can see it, which is a little bit awkward. And if we start out with just a small wire, we insert it to the point where you can see the teeth come down here and it's gonna pull that wire away. We've found that if you do this multiple times, it doesn't work as well. So you get it right the first time, it pulls everything right off and you have a nice stripped wire. If you happen to go short, like that, and you want to come in again, it's a 50-50 on if it's going to work. See how it kind of just chewed that up and didn't pull it off? We find that the second and third time stripping is definitely not where you want to be. The cutter does work well down there, and every once in a while if you squeeze it weird like that, like I did trying to just show what's going on, it will not pull the wire perfectly. So it's a tool that you get used to a little bit and there are pluses and minuses to it, but we can take different wire, different sized wire, and as we get up to a number 12, it becomes less and less reliable, especially with this stranded. It worked well here if I kind of go fast, but if I go slow, eh, it worked again. But usually if I can go slower on the bigger wire, it doesn't work as well. Let's try this guy. Worked good there going slow. Sometimes this is not reliable going slow and I'll just have to have you believe me on that one. This is one that we prior tried to strip and it didn't. Worked again there. 
Either way, if this tool is used, it will strip just about any wire, even some of that Chinese wire that is not perfect. And that's what's made this tool good. Now, if you look down here for crimping, if we want to crimp something, and this is a pretty big insulated piece, we can get it right inside there. But again, we're working inside with our hands. We can crimp that. Plenty of pressure to crimp, and it crimped it very well. I just don't like moving my hands down as much. That's why I try to find another set of crimpers to use up on top. If you were to use a really small wire, you can see here that you have a plus and a minus for how much these will grab and pull away. So if you're using a 24 or a 22 gauge wire, you can adjust that micro adjustment knob to kind of help you out. Pretty cool set. So while this tool might not be a one-stop tool or a one-tool only for stripping, cutting, and crimping, I guess it could be. For me, I find it more efficient just to simply strip any size wire quickly without trying to find that exact hole in stripping and pulling away. Now, that doesn't tell me or doesn't give me the opportunity to only use this tool, so I always have a secondary tool that I'm more comfortable crimping with but it seems to speed things up, especially working with a lot of switches or pre-wiring while you're on the bench or even in those tight to reach under the dash situations where I know I don't have to be in that right hole just to get a good strip. Now with that said, we've also bought a pin crimper and I'll put a link to this down below. If you're not familiar what a pin crimper is, Basically, you have little tiny pins that will push into connectors. And these are tough to crimp, especially to get them right. So you have a little bit different style of pin crimping in here. Uh, this was a fairly inexpensive tool also. I'll put a link to this in the bottom. We're gonna use that a lot more when we start to get into the turn signals and plugging pins into the dash that are used in the European models of the Polaris Turbo S behind us. So we'll get into that, maybe a little bit more on wrenches and rides, but make sure you're subscribed to this channel and wrenches and rides. Give us a like in this video. We appreciate your time, guys. Have a great day.